disable the NASA, disable the bomb that's going to like blow up NASA or something. Yeah, I was going to ask like, if oh, y'all were inspired by any of the quests. Like, inspired? did it excite you or interest Take you at all? go get in my car. Welcome to New Game Plus. This is a retro gaming podcast where three guys spend seven days playing one old game and then we talk about it. My name's Dustin. My name is Kenny. My name's Nolan or whatever. And this is episode 422. And the question of the week, what game or games are you most thankful for that you discovered on the podcast? Professor Layton. One of mine. Easy. Is Professor Layton in the Curious Village. It's okay. I, I knew of the game, but had never played it. It's the case for so many games on the podcast, but... That one, playing it on hardware that week, there is something so special about that magical. game. Those games, magical for sure. I loved it. I, and here, I'll just, I have to say this now. I know this might be controversial. I think Layton is above Ace Attorney. Yes. Because, you know, they get compared a lot and they're even, they even have a mashup game. I, I choose Layton if I had to choose. I would choose the same. Professor Layton and the Curious Village was one of the first, if not the only games that we played on the podcast that after I beat it that week, I then picked, or I found the second mm -hmm. game in the series, Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, and played that <laughs> one as well. And I have now started Unwound Future, the third. Oh, no, yeah, you very went nice. full on into the whole series. Oh, because it's it's phenomenal. It's There's just something I yeah, heavily agree arguing. with about that <laughs> game. The the throwing all those puzzles at you is yes, that is the best. I am shocked, Nolan, that and, and I had forgotten from recording the episode that you hadn't played it before the episode. That shocks yeah. me because you were a DS fanatic. I was a DS boy, and that was a DS game. But yeah. it was a classic case of whatever age I was at that time, judging the game by its cover. And it's a great cover, but at the time, I wasn't looking for that, you know? Sure. Probably played Pokemon or something stupid. When, when you say discovered on the podcast, do you overtly mean games that <laughs> we played? There's no way you need clarification for this. There's but no did you, way. But, uh, Nolan, did you hear the question? Yes. <laughs> it's not even a good... The, the, the question, the clarifying question is... Are you when you're asking this? Is it does it have to be a game we played? No, yes, on the podcast, I have I have games I've picked up because of like community recommendations from our podcast community. Not that, I that. Have played without the podcast. I'll just ask the question again, and you wow. answer it as you see fit. Okay, but I would Ooh. like for you to listen to the wow. question. <laughs> okay. I'm what listening. game or games are you most thankful for that you discovered on the podcast? Uh, fine. Uh, DCSS. <laughs> oh no, guys! I, I I promise you, and you can Both look at these. my show notes later. Oh, my the God. first one I have is Curious Village, and the second one I have is DCSS. It's not allowed. <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. And that's you, so funny. And you know what's you, you know what's funny about. Both of those answers for y'all is I bounced off that game so hard. I oh, oh I, know. I hate well, it. Duh. Like I hate it. And I'm just, shocked that I bounced on it. I, <laughs> I am too. I am too. It's right up you my definitely alley. Bounced so no on one's it. surprised by that fact. But I'm surprised that you felt you into definitely it. bounced Can on we, that D C S S. We spent a lot of time playing that game together a separately. And like and after, like continued to yeah, play. Yeah, to it the for point where y'all had Every to keep it a, a while, secret. I hear the from me. Every once in a while, I hear the siren call and almost go back in. Nolan gets mad anytime he finds out that Kenny and I are gaming together when Nolan and I have yeah. gamed many times without Kenny. And Nolan, <laughs> we invite you, but sometimes you go MIA more than Kenny right It doesn't bother Kenny, though. So, I, uh, no, I don't go MIA. <laughs> it depends on the game. MIA. Yeah, maybe it does bother him. Okay. I had those two, but I had a third that was my real answer. Your real answer? Let me guess. You would be able to guess, but you won't be able to in the time frame with which you have. I Okay, tell me then. Shadow of the Colossus. I would have said oh, that. Yeah. Give me five more seconds. 
Guys, I fell hard for that one, and I yeah. think about it regularly. The, <laughs> the most fun part of that episode was watching you react to that game. That game has one of the best endings in any video game I've ever seen. I think the game. I think the game that is. I think that might be the only game that we played on the podcast that has broken to my top ten favorite games of all time. Yeah, that's actually crazy. That I hadn't already played. Wow, that's you know? a sacred list. Uh, I've got my. I've got it right here. Going through. I mean, Hades, but that's obviously that was we found together or it came out. Yeah, a that few wasn't years ago, but that's not retro on the podcast, uh, right? And then I put God of War on here too, but again, mm. that's that was just something that we played. Oh, uh, 2018. You made fun of me and then dropped Hades. You can't. I'm going answer- through my list right now of my favorite oh, games of, of all tins. time. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I thought you were still answering question of the week. Yes, indeed. Shadow of the Colossus is the only one from. Wow. Finding it on the podcast and going into wow. my top ten. It's a great game. It is time, however, to steer this conversation in a different direction so it won't fall flat and leave us exhausted. (laughs) Moving on with the episode before I blow a gasket. Like in our retro game of the week, Vigilante 8, Second Offense. Overview. Vigilante 8, Second Offense is the sequel to Vigilante 8. First Offense. First Offense. Vigilante (laughs) 1st. Eighth offense. The, the first vigilante, vigilante game 18, to barely offend legal. us happened uh, years ago. I'm going to round up and say a decade ago as one of the first, I think actually first uh, guest? guest episodes we ever had on the podcast. That was a big deal for us at Which the time. is super fun. Mr. Danathan Q. Yeah, yeah. It still blows my mind that we are having retro moments for a retro gaming podcast we've been going a long time actually before you continue let me uh, we do need to take just a moment dan q8000 who already had a following eight years ago and didn't have any right to come on a a, a (laughs) dumb retro gaming podcast that had 20 episodes oh we had 20 at the time okay and four listeners at that point and was garbage but he, who had a thriving YouTube community, let me just drive that in, um, said yes and came on to talk yeah. to us as our first guest. Uh, Very I mean, cool. he did bring super, Vigilante super 8, nice. so maybe he was trolling us. <laughs> he was punishing us, but shout out Dan Q. Yeah, that, absolutely. That, I sent him an yeah. email on behalf of us oh, nice. this week. I hadn't heard back yet, but I'm sure that it, he's a busy man and he he's will busy. write back because we're big, we're important now. That's sick. I wouldn't go that far. Vigilante 8, second offense, now that we're uh, in our context, jumping back into it, is is truly just a direct sequel of Vigilante 8. Um, Maybe even not a sequel, so much as a pre-DLC DLC. DLC. Uh, This is more of the same. It's Vigilante 8 uh, with a few more characters, and you get to play it again. In fact, the game was almost entitled Vigilante 12 because oh. there were the eight original characters and then they added four more uh and that would have been a better name was, a bad name that would have been no. a much better name no both no, no, names and, are bad no th- th- they are well, not sure. good but they make sense and actually when it was silly that we couldn't put this together but it was also we were like four years old when we did the, this episode back in 2016 i uh, wish i was that young we didn't know why they called it vigilante eight and it's not hard um it's because there's eight of them yeah. No. Okay. Well, that w- 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 I thought we were on the same page. Uh, it's because V8, the V8 engine. And then, yes, they're going to put in eight characters, so that makes sense. So then V12, which is another popular engine I've heard, uh, would have made... You're such a car guy. You would, would have made a lot of sense. And I love that one. You know what's a bad title? Vigilante 8 colon second offense. What does that even mean? Don't say yeah, the Yeah, and word then the third colon. game... That makes it even worse than it is. The third game can be called um, a Hemi. Yep, that's a good joke. And then the fourth like game his, can be called his, Electric his, Tesla. Before he continues, joke, but tell worse. us what the story is about. And then, <laughs> Elon Musk. I'm, is I know, on principle, I refuse, because this story is nonsense. Um, no, I know you're rolling your eyes, <clears> Dustin, <throat> but literally, if you if you read through a summary of this story... It sounds like it was written by AI. It's absolute nonsense. I I would tell you a better way to learn the story. 
play through the entire game and take detailed notes of every single little thing no because that wasn't happening read the comic wait really oh, <laughs> i read the comic this week there was a single you release didn't? comic i did yeah absolutely <laughs> Uh, I think they were planning on doing more than one, oh, yeah. but they only put out one. Because it was garbage. Um, <laughs> was it so bad? The graphics are fine. Like, the illustrations are fine and in line with everything that's going on. The dialogue is tr is terrible. And it really had that comic syndrome that happens sometimes where you have such limited pages. So, you're trying to throw in the story. And it was told very poorly. So, it's well, bad. And it's a bunch of different storylines all yeah. going on. Because, like, each of these characters, they give their own storyline. But they're trying to be like weird and hip and cool and throw these like twist surprises at you, but with all of them. So, you know, there's relationships that get twisted and then like surprise moments where the astronaut isn't actually an astronaut. Uh, and like, I know, I won't throw spoilers in there and all kinds of other just nonsense. And it really, it's like a bad soap opera. I don't even know. Why did they want these characters to work so much and have like a story? Like <laughs> racing <laughs> games need a story That's here. the least important thing in a racing game. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't hate the idea. I'm all about having interesting and fun characters. Sure, but like let it be a caricature character. Write up a little bio on them and let it be edgy and cheeky and whatever and leave it there yeah. and let them just drive around a cool car and blow each other up. You don't have to know why they're driving a bus instead of something else because of some backstory. I don't know. They just got really into the weeds here and it was unnecessary. Gameplay. What you do need to know, however, is that the two factions from the first game are returning and a new third faction is introduced and so you've got the vigilantes and the coyotes, coyotes from the yep. original game along with some of the original cast and then you've got the drifters which is a a third new group uh and the story is off the wheels here but they do some time traveling did i don't know if you guys even <laughs> paid attention or caught or cared. Yep. But like one of the good guys from the first game yeah. as he was older uh, kind of turned and now he's going back in the past to the 70s where the first game takes place to stop everything that had happened and this third faction uh brings a lot of new characters because it's uh people from like the the future so it's a cyborg named dallas 13 and kenny already mentioned it but a former nasa astronaut bob o and others bob o i like dallas 13 is that who you played yeah the cowboy yeah, I played Bob O because an astronaut, and I could already tell something was fishy about his body shape. Uh, and and his vehicle was one of the few that didn't really have wheels. I don't know, maybe his was a rover like with wheels, but yeah. there uh, Dallas's didn't have wheels. His was a hover, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, no. How then wheels? I didn't play Dallas 13. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, Kenny, who did you gravitate to? Because the characters are important here. <laughs> they are. Uh, I I played probably most in the hover car. I don't think that was actually Dallas. Was it not Dallas? I think Nolan's no one's right. Uh, it it may be. I literally don't know. Look, but I I don't know nor care. I, yeah, I <laughs> tried to play a variety of characters to try and see how much difference there was between sort of setups and feel of gameplay. You know, so I dabbled in depth, not width. The other way, width, not depth. Um, I will tell you my least favorite character by a margin is the uh is the stunt man the trio the the, the yeah the knock on uh who's the famous stunt guy the evil knievel like. bro evil knievel yeah it, the evil knievel type America. character is garbage why because stats are just archetype <laughs> both okay all of the all of the stuff all of the handling of all of the vehicles at the beginning of this game is awful. thank you okay yes I, that's what i was gonna say too there's stats <laughs> on these cars that don't matter matter because they feel the car it's like old school driving but like i think intentionally nerfed at the beginning because of yeah. the way that you progress or whatever you, kenny you mentioned it in your first play but you can't turn 
Ken, the way that there you was would a, expect to. It's really there ridiculous. There was a m- moment in the first play where Kenny just w- s- s- refused to drive and slowly turned his vehicle in a circle so that he could track the and enemy. I, I would was fault him for him. that normally, right. but yeah. it's it's kind it of a joke. But by the it way, was about as effective as I could be. That was the top. That was an S tier first play, by the way, Kenny. Oh, thanks. The blo- was, bloopers yeah. and all. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the bloopers yeah. were fun. I don't know about the gameplay so much. No, the gameplay was but the bloopers were bad, fun. But. Like Tetrisphere, the game that we played last week, all of the game modes here are basically the <laughs> yeah. same thing. So you've got yeah. arcade, quest, and survival, and guess what you're doing in every single one of them? Shooting guns at cars. Vehicular combat. Vehicular combat. <laughs> you are Yeah, you're 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 driving around trying to destroy other vehicles. The, one of the key differences and it's, it's key. I mean, it's super tiny, actually. But in the quest mode, you actually have quests. Quests. Uh, and yeah. there was a similar mode in the first one. But I remember those stages is really just like one thing, like protect this or destroy this. In this one, they give you multiple quests that you can do, but you don't have to do any of them. Yeah, it's it's really obnoxious because you get a whole series of like what feel like mandatory quests and then the round ends no matter what when you kill the last of the other enemy cars yeah. so intentionally or unintentionally yeah. however far you've gotten when you kill the last of the other enemies it's like great you won it's over you achieved the thing that matters and you don't really get punished for not completing the quest that you're given there are like achievements in the game that i think are linked to some I was quest say true ending certain yeah, just certain like character unlocks and some things that I think um, depend on on getting those successfully. But in terms of just like story progression, just like getting through it, yeah, doesn't even matter. Um, Completely optional. It is funny because some of the objectives too, like think was talking about lore, are like super important things like disable the NASA, disable the bomb that's gonna like blow up NASA or something. Yeah, I was gonna I was ask like, if y'all oh, were inspired by any of the quests. Like, inspired? did it excite you or interest Take you at all? Take in my car. No, um, they. No, because they shouldn't be there. The core of the game is one mode, like you're saying, which is probably shine, which probably shines best multiplayer with a friend, split screen. When you throw in any sort of like single player tasks and try to make a story out of it. Um, it falls really flat and and feels fetchy, like and maybe there yeah. are rewards like Kenny like tied to it like Kenny was saying. I say true ending in jest, but kind of not. Like, what if you unlock Vigilante thirteen or something? Uh, I don't like the quests. So I have no opinion of them. I guess I don't hate them. There are a few things uh, upgrades to your uh, car. To vehicle. Vigilante 8, Second Offense over Vigilante 8. You've got... But but here's... Uh, let me say the goodish things, and then let me say the disappointing <laughs> thing. Uh, so you have got a few different car um, temporary upgrades in this. Uh, mobility upgrades. You've got hover pods, hydro floaters, and ski and treads. Skis and treads. Uh, and these these are actually super helpful yeah in the environments that you're in so So they give you environment contextual upgrades where like if you're on snow and the handling's just complete garbage you you get those like sleds and wheels and it helps you move around more effectively on the snow etc and and it's on the water temporary so like when you're driving in louisiana and you're heading towards a swamp they placed well a few of these collectibles and you can ride drive across a hydro floater collectible and out of the bottom of your unit pops out these hydro floaters and so then you're able to drive on the water rather than sink and they will stay out as long as you stay on the water but as soon as you drive on land they'll go away and you no longer have it i like those they were they were fun a fun addition they were a fun addition um i'm asleep i got stuck upside down once absolutely because of the way they worked and I couldn't move and I got a little frustrated. Uh, but they, they were fine. Oh, your car drowned? Um, no, it didn't because I had the the appropriate hardware uh, to not drown. You drowned. Um, you were under the water. I am the no, car. I can, I, can, I can hold my breath a really long time. Um, 
I wish that we could get those upgrades in real life. The like seventies era gimmick of uh, yeah, James take Bond a car games. and just drive it straight into the water, and it's gonna just like convert and float and become a boat. Did not become a thing, which makes me sad. Tesla truck, uh, but it, yeah, it was a fine, it was a fine gimmick. A another new thing here are salvage points, and so if you do certain things, and I don't even really know all that you are able that you're how you're able I to think, get these. I think primarily just destroying the other cars, but it may there may be some other ways too. But you're but able to use that was the only ways I noticed is after I destroyed cars. You're able to use those salvage points to upgrade your car, which I don't think you were able to do in the first one. So I do yep, think Nolan new. they nerf your stats at the beginning of the game, which I guess is understandable. In most car games, they're going to do that, but you've got to do it in a smart way. Yeah, it's super obnoxious here. Shouldn't feel they're... bad to use <laughs> like right. you should... No, it feels like a. Punishment. It should feel good the first yeah. time you play a game not like you're at the worst that right. you'll ever be yeah it's a little bit the same problem we saw in simpsons skateboarding <sighs> wow is it where i mean a little bit sure but i like, didn't know you're going there got, where you've got upgrades and the game becomes much more bearable after you've gotten those upgrades but because of that when you first start you're like this is Bad. I was thinking Need for Speed Nightlife. That's not what it's called, but we underground. No, I don't know. But we, we need, played Underground One. Is that what yeah. it, um yeah. you also start off pretty slow and pretty bad, but you're yeah. able to upgrade along the way. So I get, get that it's gotta credit. be done. I don't love it. I don't I don't even think it has to be done. <laughs> there's other there's other ways. No, I like I, I I don't know. Like the idea of upgrades in general, but like they should make you feel like a superhero when you have them all. When you start the game, you shouldn't feel like un it shouldn't feel unplayable until sure. you do something about it. Yeah, let you go faster or give you better yeah. armor or give your weapons more range. Those are all fine. Or let you jump. Can't can't handle at all. Right. And then you can sort of it's handle just better not later acceptable. is not a good choice. Another mode that I would have expected in this game and I think should be in all games that have cars that are the main point is just a racing mode. Like, I know the point is vehicular combat in an arena, which is very different from kart racers or normal racers. But, like, I feel like that's an easy thing for them to add, and it breaks up the gameplay. Because I... Some people would get really bored really quickly with vehicular combat, maybe. And so I think it would have been smart if they had a different mode. doesn't have to be racing, I guess, but that's the most... That makes the most sense to me. Definitely could have used a little more variety. I, I don't know if of any, whatever choice. and I, I again, this is not a genre that I don't think any of us are uh, adept at. But I don't think that you get that blend in any vehicular combat, as far as I know. I feel, yeah, I think some of the kart racers added like versus modes where you where it turned it into vehicular, vehicular combat yeah. but didn't go the you right. know i don't know of a game that went did the opposite and it those game those kart racers that did that it worked really well for yeah. variety's sake but yeah and, and you have some pure racers that like like the kart games have you know attacks as part of them yeah um, but those aren't vehicular combat games. So I, I'm with you. I think they could blur the lines a little bit, but I get them choosing not to just for sort of identity reasons. But whether it, whether it was racing or something else, I think we could have used a little bit more. I was disappointed by many things in this game. One thing no. in particular was that, and no. I was going through a list of things that, that they upgraded from the first game one thing they didn't upgrade this is insane to me i i think vehicular combat is like the fun is yes in the vehicles but in the weaponry that you're able to have and each of these vehicles have some different weaponry some of it's a little copy paste but out of all the weapons all of those weapons are from the first game except one there is yeah. one new weapon they did add a new weapon one and I, I think maybe some of the special weapons, yeah. like per car, are also new, and, and that's a little different. But your primary set of weapons, they were like, copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. And there's not even that many of them. And then they added on a flamethrower. This is Called literally just leftover content from the first game. Packaged yeah. as... as that, I sequel. mean... Well, your yes one DLC. weapon yeah what one new weapon yes no one. one new weapon and a couple new characters and a nonsense story and then the same Boom. terrible Second handling offense. 
graphics engine. <laughs> second offense. It really is a second offense. Uh, Nolan, you Whoa. probably don't know this, and no, it will make you angry to know it. Can you then reference it me. just now? No, I'd love to tell you. Can you reference no, it? But <laughs> I don't know if this is new to this game or if it was in the first game. I think it's something that most people don't know when they come to play this game. But in this one in particular, you've got your... Uh, weapons that you're able to collect along the way but each of those weapons has like a fighting input that you're able to put in and it does a different kind of expulsion it does a different kind of shot with that same missile or rocket or whatever the case Ooh. might be so when, when so, you say like, fighting you mean yeah yeah circle forward <laughs> yeah. but you're I, driving I Oh well, yeah, I know. And I don't know if it's actually quarter circles, but it is like an up, up, down, down, BA or whatever to, 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 to which is a terrible idea for, yeah, while you're driving. Well, I'm trying to steer that doesn't work already. Why would you have me purposefully sl like sling my car to the right really quick? W are they much better moves? Like, do they matter? I, I, do you think I was able to get one of them off right. the entire yeah. week? Do, do they actually hit the enemy more reliably I mean, or something? Because because nothing hits the enemy. Even <laughs> even like your homing missiles that are supposed to, they could be directly <laughs> in front of you, in your reticle, targeted, and something that automatically aims, and you're still missing. I don't think that they increase accuracy. They just increase, like, I think one of them was, like, a, it, it makes it a bigger missile. And it takes, you know, rather than just one missile at a time, it will take two or three because it's a powered up or something like that. So, uh, it's a bad idea in theory, and it's a bad idea in execution. As a, as a concept, giving you an earned way of doing something skill-based that hits harder... I think that could work in a vehicular combat game. The, doing it like with fighting inputs and not even telling you anything about it <laughs> yeah, that's, are that's, both that's, terrible decisions. It's just there. Was there anything that... Uh, each of these characters have a different order of levels i believe in a different like they're on a different mission they each also have their own endings i'm gonna ask again did any of that inspire you to want to go through each of the characters to kind of play through their whole quest mode in order to stop really it. build out the story stop it nah did you say inspired like I, um you weren't inspired by any of this <laughs> no dallas 13 maybe you're <laughs> saying him I mean, uh, well, then no, Insp no inspiration to be had by me. But you know what? Right. Just to, to that same point about the characters, character choice matters in kart racers because the character is like sitting on four wheels and like they have personality and they have a design. In a game like this or a racing game, you don't see the driver, you are the car. I don't care about the racer. So like the the point the the idea that they made the whole game or tried to make the whole game about characters on a quest that I'm not looking at ever. I'm not inspired, bro. They have you'd a, you, you'd have rather just been like the bus really needs an oil change. I would and dude can't, and he can't afford it yes. unless he goes on this Let mercenary me tell operation. You, if that it, <laughs> No, I could write this better. You are you are the car. It's alive, and you have to go save That's the world. Cars. That's called Cars. Cars 2. The movie. Yeah, like Cars yeah. the movie. That's better than this. I, uh, I, I get what you're saying. Look, I've made it clear before that I like characters and story in video games. Stop. They tried to put characters and stories in this game. As much as I like stories and characters, I don't know if every game needs them. Right. Thank you no, for admitting that at least. And, and they, they did them in the most over-the-top late night. Like, the attempt at characters matches the genre, but not for good. I will say, Nolan, although you don't really see the characters, you're hearing their voice, their, their voices. They've got their little key things whenever they're being destroyed or shot at or doing well. Uh, and so each character has 
character. I like they're they've got their own flair and their vehicles operate sure. in a way that is characteristic of the vibe that they're going for. And with 13 characters, they all have somewhat of a unique vibe going on. I mean, Kenny already mentioned up front he didn't like it, but that evil Knievel kind of situation is so different from all the others that you've got. So having a vast cast of cars or characters, I think is a good thing. Uh, but maybe they went too hard thinking that we would care. I agree. And I don't know. They do play very differently. But I felt like you needed even more uniqueness. You know? And I know, I know there's different stats. But, like, if I'm the big vehicle, you know, like the garbage truck or whatever, I need to feel like I can take a bunch more damage... And the primary way I should be dealing damage is by just running people over. Yeah. Like, it just he's, makes sense. He's playing Overwatch. But I felt that. Right. They try. I don't right. feel like there was enough of it. I did. Like, with the garbage truck in particular, your special ability there, once you, once you uh, acquire it, is to drive up to people and you've got pretty much like a lift on the front and it attaches to the car and slams it to the ground multiple times so like that's actually that that one's on brand thematic and super powerful you know what they should have done he's creating his own game right now you know what they should have done they should have taken the cars <laughs> put them in an arena and a big soccer ball and two goals it's not a bad that idea. that would have done really well they could <laughs> have called it idea. like Soccers. And then let them fly. I don't know. With boost? Something like. Or yeah, cars. jump. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. In Rocket League, you can jump. Your car can jump. Yeah. And boost. Yeah, sure. come on. Jumps. Dude, you put a jump in this game. I'm actually going to talk about it. But there's no <laughs> jump in the game, so I'm not going to talk look, about it. Look, honestly, I think. Look. You might, listener, dear listener, be able to hear and maybe you're piecing together our feelings towards the game. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're right. But. Maybe. Um. I feel like what, one of the biggest things that could have fixed so much is simply the handling. If you could handle your car better <laughs> yes. from the beginning, it's it's already ten times better than a than the game was. But and again, you, have, you can you have to you remember can do that that race car games on the PlayStation all handled poorly. In Every hindsight. single one of them. What about kart racers? I'm sure there's a kart racer on the PlayStation. Isn't that the crash? I'm just trying to think, like, is this no, old, I'm sure it could be better. old yes. racer bad, or is this just wrong? Second. Both, but more it's the wrong. second than the first. Because you can, by this time, there were many vehicle games I with know. better handling. Yeah, of course. You're right. Aged. So contemporaries that come to mind in this genre, because it's not a, I don't think it's a really fleshed out, category pretty narrow i mean it's pretty it was narrow it was sort of medium big for this very yeah. brief period of time for like a week and whenever this came out yes <laughs> and so twisted metal yes twisted that's metal the, is the big only one. one i know of as well same yeah did it right because of all the points that we talked about because they made it ridiculous because the concept is ridiculous and your characters yeah are there but they didn't try to make it like a whole thing. So I was just trying to think like that had to be inspiration for this game. Unless this came out before Twisted Metal, which I really doubt. Um, but like they were contemporaries. Yeah, I mean, like they're they, fighting. Right. There just aren't I don't know. many yeah. others in this category. I feel like. I mean, no, Twisted Metal was the big one. You've got other games that could be considered, you know, but that are. And, well, and didn't we even play the weird, like, cell shaded version of a vehicle we did. combat game? That I don't think that cell was damage. quite the same era, but it was similar. Cell damage, yeah. It, no, it's it's yeah. totally... You're right. That That's another one. So there were games, but it, again, it was sort of a, a weird sort of spike in popularity. It definitely feels late 90s, yeah. you know, like, yeah. uh, it, it's a product of its time, for sure. I wonder what, I, I, what sparked that. Like, what, why did they start making games like this? Like, Well, I, I, I think because there had been some successful kart racers, which you've already mentioned. They're w kart racing. You're getting abilities, and you're using them to win the race and to take out your opponent. So that is very similar. And paper, if they yeah. had a mode 
that wasn't race, but just ever. And they did in the early Mario Karts. They had a whole mode where you're just um, trying to survive, out survive everybody else. You have three Absolutely. shells, crash, right. crash the team racing, balloons, things, balloons and you lose them. Yeah. Yep. Well, that was yeah, Mario you Party. Could, you could still no, you could no, no, do no, this in different Mario ways Party. and and it work. All, yeah. Important question. What as as we look at games of this era, both of this you know same genre and different ones. Were there any PlayStation games that didn't look like complete garbage? <laughs> yeah, it's a good many, question. Many. And yes, plenty. Many. Okay. So this game has little excuse on that front? This one had some weird thing happening where the textures were like real-time rendering and moving. And that happened oh, it did, a lot. It did weird, trippy stuff that, like that a lot Other, other games game. suffered from that, obviously. Yeah. But... Oh, you're clipping through buildings, and you're seeing textures so many morph. Times. Well, because in you can destroy really weird ways, some of them. and so I think like because they were like, oh yeah, you can even break the buildings, like the texture. They have like three textures for a building or for a street lamp, and it's like perfect, kind of dying and then just dead. And so it was just it felt like a, a swap. Some guy had but, a projector up, and he like ta he'd take down the <laughs> the first one so you see the next one. The amount of times my game like glitched out with a vehicle flying through a building or flying in the air, getting caught half underwater and then like projected like it, yeah. it was insane how I was going through textures like they didn't even exist. And then I was being pushed out of like it, it was constructed no, it was poorly crazy. and then it was so bad to look at and experience. Yeah. Yeah. There were things that could have been cool. Like there's one bomb that like lands and it hits and it like makes this little earthquake. Yeah. And the first couple of times that it ever went off, like the concept is really cool, but I didn't even realize that that's what was happening because all of the other graphics are so random and all over the place. I literally thought it was just sort of like visually glitching, not this like intentional thing that it was trying to sell. It, it it's it's not great, it so which is bad. too bad because the explosions and the cool weapons, like the look of one of these games could be so rewarding. It was so bad that it had me doubting myself, like kind of what you were saying, Kenny, about like, are there games right. that didn't look like complete garbage? And I'm like, man, this era was so exactly. bad on graphics, but no, this game has bad textures, collision graphics. Yes. Other games on the play. So, uh, there were others on the PlayStation that also looked bad, and sure. even the good ones are rough around the edges in 2024. But this is like, yeah, this er, is early bad. early 3D. We get it. Somewhat limited hardware. People are figuring things out, but that only goes so far as an excuse. This just doesn't look good. I do need to issue an apology to both of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, earlier okay. this week when we were getting the game ready and I had done it before the other two guys, I let them know of a bug that could happen with emulation to where you're not going to hear music in game. And I told you how to work around that. And I apologize Yeah, that, that you then had to listen to the music yeah. other than the Thanks banger intro track, which is I good. I can dig it. Sing it. No. No, I literally he just doesn't know the words. Know it. Can you dig it? Yeah. Well, no, someone's like, Vigilante, second, second offense. It literally just has the word in it. <laughs> yes, but it's good. But the <laughs> music in game fine. is what you would think it is, but just not good nor memorable. No. No. And just sharp and. Yeah. <laughs> the music definitely, is sharp. Like, <laughs> definitely not memorable. I will agree that the, that the like opening track is the most banger of the tracks. Yeah. I was bobbing my head around a little bit, like when it was playing. But it's even kind of cheesy, you know, the sort of self-aware yeah. references that's and fine. the kind of and like the whole thing. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, which again, I don't mind. Um, and I don't think I don't think the music was like the worst thing about this game. But I do feel like the rest of the tracks are pretty forgettable. Like th they didn't do much for me outside yeah. of the the title track. Back to the graphics. Uh, the no. HUD. <laughs> the HUD is. Oh, it is pretty. Poor, very, very poor. Why? Stop. We're creating a podcast. Tell me why. Go look at it. I, I played it all you. week long. Use your eyes. 
It's I, just, you can't tell. I don't know. What's that what? You can't tell. There's a mini map, but the, it doesn't I help I struggled you. figuring out what the radar was doing for sure early. Some of the UI choices were really awkward. Pulling up the, you know, start menu and having to like sub jump into specific categories. But like those are fairly small nitpicks against all the other stuff that we've railed against that really were actually obnoxious. i don't know honestly the hud did not bother me at all you've got your radar which works like any other radar no. you've got your damage meter yes no. and you've got the car damage of the one that you're fighting and then you've got your missile I type do, i do think the little pictures of the cars yeah uh kind of worked because it were changes different for each yeah for each car that you're like fighting against and then shows its specific that's health. supposed yeah. to be a car <laughs> yes <laughs> what I don't okay. know what game you played or what you're looking at, but <laughs> Vigilante, Vigilante 8 Second, second offense, offense is great. Uh, oh my God, best HUD of, of 1999. I, uh, I do want to point out, as we often do, one of the modes here that could have been a little bit more fun were the two-player modes, which you're not getting to play much today. Sure. You've got I think a that's co-op the mode. You play these games. You've got a co-op mode. I like any kind of co-op which game. Which is nice. Yeah. And then you've got like a, it's called Grand Melee Deathmatch, I think, which is just absurd, but where y'all are like just all in there together. Two player mode would make a game like this more fun. In fact, that's, hey, 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 there we go. Mario Kart. We played versions of it for the podcast. I know it's a different kind of game, but it can be enjoyed by yourself, but that game even, right, is so much more fun when you're shines, playing with someone. Yeah, it shines on the couch. This kind um, of genre, when you're in sure. a car, especially when you're battling, is most fun when you're being able to do that with a yeah. friend, and you don't get to do that with retro gaming as much anymore. Yeah, that's definitely why you play this game. We've been, like, ripping it apart for the single-player experience. I do... I would have much nicer things to say, I think, if I played it with someone. Sure. But you're not. It's... There's a lot of other multiplayer co-op games, though, that you could also be playing instead of this hey, one. Hey, this year's couch co-op. Let's like... play Second Offense. No. Okay. Eh. Okay. <laughs> if we wanted to, we could get a copy for uh, our PlayStation. $15 used. <laughs> or $60 Too new. Much. 60 if you wanted a copy for your Nintendo 64, because it also came out, which, Kenny, did you even mention at the top that it also came out for no, Dreamcast? No, 64 and Dreamcast, both. And Nintendo 64. Uh, the Nintendo 64 version is considerably more expensive. Yeah, it's just sure. those carts, man. Nature of the cart. Final thoughts. At the end of each and every one of our episodes, we determine whether or not the game gets our vote for New Game Plus status, which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down. The vote does require two-thirds of the vote to swing one way or the other. Nolan, how much did you enjoy this game? Help me. Get me out of here. I'm being held hostage. I don't like the first game, but I <laughs> think I like it better than this game. I was offended by second offense it's it's highly unplayable due to the controls due to the visuals due to just the jank of the game which is prominent the jank is at the forefront of the game and then like aiming your gun and shooting things comes second uh it, it's really unfun and there's a lot of issues with it so thanks to the joker who put it on the retro master list so is that a no? Uh, I I agree with Nolan. Uh, the J is P, which means the the jank is what'd you say? Prominent. 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 The J is P. Um, the physics are just garbage here. Uh, I, I and look, it's been many years, eight, but. I feel also like I enjoyed the first one more than the second. It felt as though the first knew what it was, and gave us that. This was trying to innovate in the smallest ways but even the innovations that it had and innovations is a is a <laughs> generous like that is a generous word here but even the innovations it was trying to make were small and not even good for example the quests i like the idea of having more quests but bad quests where you just feel like you're driving around not knowing where you're going to deliver one thing from point a to point b 
or going and destroying this, it didn't feel good. Um, and then on top of it, it didn't feel good. So like the handling <laughs> and the yeah. physics, when you, these games, I think one of the things that should be first and foremost is uh, they should the, the vehicles should be enjoyable to drive. That is not a hard sure. ask. That's and that is not that is not what game. we got. That is not <laughs> what we got. It made it miserable from the start to the finish this week. This th this is giving me no hope for this genre, but certainly no hope for this series. But I think we've cleared the series now. I think there might be one There's obscure no game on the arcade actually. But no way but V eight is over with. No new game plus status for me. Um, I kind of disagree with you guys. Uh, I do. Uh, you're rolling your eyes. The second game, second offense. Sure, it was still offensive, but I think it was better than the first one. Um, that doesn't say much. It wasn't a great game. <laughs> It's clear our opinions. <laughs> okay. Like we we, we right. sometimes we kind of like you know do pretty <sighs> neutral reporting and then really save the uh, outsider opinion. Y'all know where we're standing here. We couldn't help it. It's trash. Uh, didn't didn't enjoy this one much. We've said all the reasons why, so I'm not going to continue to just uh, I don't know damage it further. Um, certainly no new game plus for me either what would be fun and i didn't do it this week is to go back and listen to our episode with dan that q to see us trying to be um kind because i positive I, about a game <laughs> that I, I know that we also didn't love it but right i at that time it was our first guest and so we were trying probably to like oh, that's the best game ever <laughs> no <laughs> but maybe no, but we were trying to like say positive things about like the nostalgia of it and like the concept of vehicular combat, oh, yeah, which are all I can fair see things. see where they were coming from. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's just not our game. For I think actually bad beyond that. Even even if we like this genre, I have a hard time feeling like you're gonna like this one. I don't. I don't know. All of this means V eight two O is not new game plus certified. But what did you think on our YouTube poll? Twenty four percent said yes, it's worth playing today. Eleven percent said no. And 65% have never played it before. 65. Y'all are lucky. Those ratios Y'all are lucky. confuse me a little bit. But I do know people liked this stuff. And some a bunch of people grew up on on this genre. And it clicked for them. Whatever Nobody reason. Nobody likes this. Yeah, no. I think a lot. I think there's a whole subset of subhumans that uh, either loved. <laughs> no, no, we don't judge. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. You can be a yeah. good person even if you <laughs> like this bad game. But uh, I'm saying that either loved Twisted Fate. Is that what it's called? Fate. Twisted Metal Probably. or V8, and they grew up playing this and loved it during the '90s. Uh, it was not us three. In our community, many played along with us this week and wrote in their thoughts. Uh, the first one is, is this. I have oh to believe that it's like an April Fool's kind of thing, even though we're a little it, bit late, but it might well, not be. But yeah. listen to this. It sounds absurd. Okay. KL31 said, I played for 15 minutes and had to force myself to stop. Otherwise, I would have played through the night. What an incredible hidden gem of a game. Quite possibly one of the PlayStation's finest offerings. This graphical masterpiece easily yeah. could have fooled me into thinking it was for the PS2. Can't wait to sink some serious <laughs> hours into this little beauty. I'm going to be surprised if Vigilante 8 Second Offense doesn't get NGP unanimously. We well, just play for 15 minutes. You're so overwhelmed. The hell good it no, was. I, oh, that you had to turn it off? I had to stop. I, no, I'm with you. No, I'm that's here funny. in tone. <laughs> That's yeah, so funny. The PS2. We're, we're getting, we're getting that's crazy. really hey, I, funny I, to say. I thought 15 they were minutes going, in, I had to put it down because I just like knew PS3. it was good. <laughs> PS3 I, It's like a ruffle. Like You can't just play for 15 uh, minutes or you're playing all night long. Well, I felt uh, guilty because it was so good. Steinake said, I'll be very surprised if Vigilante 8 Second Offense does get NGP unanimously. Yeah, sure. Uh, Second Offense should be a very solid arcade fun, but instead, it's just frustratingly difficult. I've played quite a bit of Twisted Metal in my days, and the controls here are possibly worse than Twisted Metal and Which gameplay unnecessarily dead. difficult. I played multiple games with multiple characters and was unable to clear a single level in arcade mode. And don't bother with quest mode. It makes no sense. I beat the first mission in three minutes after only clearing one of three objectives. No one GP. It just doesn't make sense. The word arcade was used. It should be more arcadey, mm. and I don't know what it is that they tweaked about this gameplay that 
they tried to make it console friendly or something, but they should have stayed arcade mode. Maybe they, I don't know. Maybe it's the scope. Like, because in Twisted Metal, the stages are much smaller. Yeah, these are also massive stages that you're having to drive right. around just to find an Emptiness. enemy. Because in our, in, in and then the, there's four upgrades in the whole giant <laughs> stage. But in the quest mode, like the first stage, you only have one enemy. The second stage, you maybe have two. Like you, so for the longest time, you don't even have a lot of guys around you at all. Mm -hmm. I I will say, and we didn't talk about it, and I'm just as we're talking about stages, I want to put this in there. There are some interactables throughout some of the stages. Yeah, the concept there is kind of fun. That's welcome. Um, like destroying things like on the like on the um ski slope stage yeah. being able to like catch a ride on the lift yeah I there's think a lot of things where one. like you have interactions with the with the level that are it was a cool concept at least let me give you one more conan no said i played the From first TV? vigilante 8 a lot as a kid because I rented a game, and when I got home to play it, I discovered there were accidentally two discs in the case. One of them being someone's <laughs> personal copy of Vigilante. I kept it. I wasn't sure what I should hey, expect with this one, but we're reporting to the police. Uh, but he I was, is a little vigilante. I was a bit disappointed oh. that it was just a reskin of the first game. So they added maybe a handful of new features. It's not enough to say it's not basically the same game. I beat the quest for multiple characters in my first sitting, and don't really plan to play anymore. I know this will not be received well by you guys if you hate the first one you're surely going to hate this one too kenny sequel theory misses on this title it does i miss your tv show eh. i love your podcast it's the barbarian it's better, it's better than the first so i i it's it not. still works for me it's for now we're setting aside v820 and we are not randomly selecting the next retro game of the week because it's time once Ooh. again for a director's episode hey. let me give you a few pieces of information about this okay okay first of all eddie from smashing bricks a retro gaming podcast will be joining us next week eddie fun and out of all the games that eddie could have selected eddie selected a game that is very recent Oh, okay. Meaning, I mean, it had to be 15 years old or older. Nope, just 15 years old. Okay. And well, it makes the cutoff. A couple of months. Okay. Okay. I believe it is our first game in this particular year to play on the podcast. I believe it is the, wow. our first game to play on this particular console on this wow. podcast. Wow. Okay. Because in this year, I believe is a new generation of of consoles. Huh. I, I don't want to give you wow. much. I can't give you much, so I'm just going to give it all to you. No. Okay. okay. I mean, it's one or the other. Give us something. Cue the randomizer. The game that we'll be playing for the next seven days came out in 2009, February 2009 in Japan. It is an action RPG wow. for the PS3 from a company called From Software, where players take on the role of a hero brought to Boletaria to kill its fallen king, Alant, and pacify the old one. For the next seven days, we're playing a video game called Demon's Souls. Boys. This is the last and only FromSoft game, Souls, Souls FromSoft game that I need to play. You haven't played you it? You haven't done this one yet? I intentionally haven't because there is a remake on PS5. I do right, not that came have out a few PS5, years back. so I'm a little upset, actually, that I have to play the original <laughs> on PS3. Which, yes. Which is, that is crazy that I don't think we played PS3 yet. No, no, which no, is no, weird. No. We should have a conversation at some point no. wait, about wait, wait, dates. I this will not crazy. go out with you. I'm a married man. <laughs> Nolan, I'm shocked that you haven't played it. It's the only yeah, so one. There's the it's the only Souls game I don't have under my belt. And let me tell y'all, apparently it is a doozy and the hardest one. Oh no! Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be harder I'm than DS terrified. one. I, I, its reputation precedes it, yeah. and I've not gotten into the genre on purpose, so we'll see. Well, I'm excited because I knew we were going to be picking and playing this game because we have a director's yeah. episode. You guys didn't. Uh, it's my turn to do the first play, and I recorded it just a couple of hours oh, ago. Yeah. So, Nolan, right after this, you can go watch <laughs> me step into my second Souls-like game? Yeah. 
That'll be a good primer for when you finally get around to Elden Ring. Find a copy of Demon's Souls and play it along with us and Eddie this week. Join our Discord server or I'll be mad. Oh, uh, boys. <laughs> Discord.gg <laughs> slash new game plus. You can also support us on Patreon.com uh, if you'd like to. And I won't be mad at you regardless of your choice. Uh, you'll be joining some folks like our newest patron this week. Whoa, new. Uh, Rohit, thank you for your support. Uh, Appreciate that. We also want to thank our director level supporters, Bro Jim, Super Hyper, the Kentucky Kid, Siegfried, and coming up with their very own director episode, Smashing Bricks Retro Gaming Podcast. Um, thank you to our producer level supporters as well. There are many of you, and you fill our hearts with good things all the time, including Alex, Alias X, Marley, and Antonin, Arlen, Yuki, Ben, Craig, Dustin's Five O'Clock, Shadow, Garlisle, Halix, Harold, J. Robert, Jake, Jordan, Joey, Justified, Justin, Kenny's Beard, Clint, Corey, Levi, Maxima, Megatroid, Miss Muso, Not Enough Dog, Riff, Sage, and Shane, Shauna, Stephen Fox, Psychomantis, Thomas Turnell, Unbedavable, and Zion. Uh, there's a whole list of you. Uh, I think Dustin was saying earlier that if we get to a thousand producer level supporters, what? he's chopping off his left arm. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm what if he committed to, that? to do get, that? Get, get on it. We're almost to that stretch goal. Are we? He won't be able I, to stretch anymore. That, you can find us on our social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. All of those links are in the show notes. Listen directly on any podcast provider of your choice. Make sure you subscribe so that you are the first to get new NGP episodes. While you're at it, please leave a kind rating and review. Our episode artwork was created by our friend Dave. Our video episode was edited by our friend Dylan. Audio episode was edited and produced by our friend Dan Willett. Join us next week as we play Demon's Souls. Wow. Until then, I'm still Dallas 13. I'm still terrified about this game we've got coming up. I'm still Dallas 13. <laughs> and this has been Vroom Vroom New Game Plus.